Hi y'all, Kraken Latte here. This will be a guide on how to do the Blackrock Depths Pet Battle Dungeon. Even if you don't like pet battles, doing this dungeon at least once will unlock an account-wide portal that takes you directly to Blackrock Mountain, as well as the title, Minion of Mayhem. For all you non-collectors, this guide will use tradable pets when possible so that you could just resell the pets when you're done with them. I'll go over what pets I use for each fight, as well as walking you through the movesets in real time. Alright, let's get right into it. First, you'll want to pick up the quest Shadowy Showdown from your Boralus or Dazara Lord trainer. You can find it next to Manipoof, the pet dungeon portal NPC, at these locations on screen. As a note, this is the final dungeon in a series of five. You'll likely need to complete the previous four to access this quest, though I had heard that this had been changed. If you don't see this quest, that's likely the reason. If you'd like me to do guides on those too, just let me know down in the comments. Once you have that quest, get yourself over to Blackrock Depths and then turn in the quest here at this NPC, picking up the next one. Completing this one will get you that account-wide portal. Now head inside by queuing up with the NPC. And for our first battle, we have Haru Cloudwatcher. Here's the pets you'll want. The Macabre Marionette, using 1, 1, and 1. The Macantula, using 1, 1, and 1. And the Dark Moon Tonk, using 1, 1, and 2. Let's get into it. So, you'll notice the three movesets at the very bottom. I'll go through them as 1, 2, and 3, and that'll be a rotation. You'll start with 2. You're going to want to hit 3. Wait for him to do this for a couple turns. Weak. <laughs> and then hit number 1 as soon as he's done using Dead Man's Party. This should take him out. If it doesn't, you might not have done them in the correct order. Use Dead Man's Party again, now which is number three, until your poor marionette is dead. He'll come back for a turn because that's as racial as an undead, but don't you worry, he's, he's gonna die again. Just let him keep doing his thing. And dead. Pull out your Macantula. And now, immediately hit number two. Number three. And that should take out Beta. The next one comes in. Hit number three again. This'll poison him. And then number one. Did a good smack on him. Number one again. Don't worry, you're a robot, you'll come back for a second turn. And you're dead. <laughs> it didn't really matter anyways, but you did some damage. Now I'll go for number two, shock and awe. And then number three to finish him off. You're wrecked, Raptor. Dunzo. Now for our next battle, number two, we have a chance at Liz, Ralph, or Rampage. Any one of those will come up, but you can use the same team for all three, which will be Bone Shard, using 111, the Jikun Hatchling at 211, and the Menagerie Custodian at 112. All three of these pets will work for all three. Doesn't matter who comes out here. Random chance at any of them. As you can see, I have Rampage. Which actually, I think he's the hardest of the three personally, but... All right, I made the mistake of hitting pass. Do not do that. <laughs> You're going to want to start with number two, but it's okay if you mess up at least once. It can happen. I've done it. Not paying attention. Hit your number two because that is going to put a nasty debuff on him. Ah, see, this is where I messed up. 
now I gotta hit pass because I am stunned. So make sure you hit number two first and then do pass, not backwards. You could still win if you do it wrong, but you know, you don't want to do that. There we go. There's our debuff. Now that can start stacking and start slapping them each turn. Number one, get a good chop chop in on him. Number one again. Don't worry, you're undead. You'll come back for a turn. Get a slap on him. Oh, Terror Guard Sand is under attack. <laughs> Don't mind that. That's my bad. Try to get a number two in on him, but of course, you're dead, so. G Kun Hatchling, you're up. I'm gonna use number three, immediately go into Flock. This will put a debuff on him that stacks with the other debuff, so he takes more damage every time he gets hit. It's beautiful. <laughs> Look at that. Look at all those debuff stacks. Oof. This guy's going to get wrecked. All right, let him finish his flock. Looks like I am stunned for a turn. That's OK. Hit pass. That's all you can do when you're stunned. And give him a good peck once you're uh, done watching him get slapped repeatedly. <laughs> peck. So cute. And this guy is down for the count. That's why that debuff is beautiful. And you've won it. Our next guy is Theron Skysong for number three. You'll want the Ravenous Prideling at one, two, and two, the Magma Rageling at one, one, and one, and then Lil Bling at two, two, and one. Let's slap this guy. Starting with our Prideling, go immediately for number two. I'll get rid of his D, his buff. Nice. Use number one. Now we're gonna go ahead and use number one again because number three is life exchange, which the lower your health, the better. So I. Went ahead and did that after two number ones. So now number three. Exactly. Does more damage to him and more health to you. Number one again, once he's done zapping you. And just keep hitting your number one until you die or he dies. One of you will die. Keep giving him a good slap. You could use the spell the second move again if you want. But uh, he's just going to pull it back up pretty, pretty immediately. Slap him again with number one. Just keep hitting that and you're up. Yep, you're dead. There we go. All right. Magma Rageling time. Now you ideally want to use your volcano first. I mis made a mistake and did not do that, which is number three. I did number one instead, but it still worked out. So. There's a little bit of flub room here. But at the very least, this put a burn on him, which took him out, so. But you will want to use your number three. See, now I try to use it, but I'm gonna keep getting stunned repeatedly, so. That's where the problem ended up. Yep, and then it swaps me. We're going to go ahead and keep using little bling here. Use number two, put up a shield on yourself. Number three, get some coinage going on him. That'll put a debuff, a dot rather. And number one, which is just like flock from the previous pets, but it's the little bling version. <laughs> just keep using that. turns and then we are going to try to switch as soon as it lets me back to my rageling nope nope I don't do it that just yet I messed up this fight pretty good but as you can see this one's got some <laughs> it's got some room yep there we go now he pulls out the rageling 
And now we're gonna use flamethrower again, at least. See, look, he's dead already. He didn't do much. That's that's why you follow the rotation. Number two. Gonna use number two for a shield. Cause little bling has gotta pull this out of his rear. Hooray! Almost anyways. This is where your uh, pet battler's intuition comes in. If you don't have that, that's why uh, you know you, you follow guides. But that's okay. If you messed up, you can still move on. For fight number four, we'll have Wilbur, Char, or Tempton. Any of those can pop up, and you're going to want to use the same team for all three of them. Foul Feather with 1 2 1, Dark Moon Zeppelin with 1 2 2, and it doesn't matter what your third pet is because the first two are going to take care of them. Here I have Wilbur, which is the piggy boy. We're going to take him out. Start with Black Claw. And then we're going to go for, which is number two, and then we're going to go for number three, which is Flock, directly after. That's pretty standard for pets with black claw and flock or something to that effect. It does some killer damage. Now you're gonna keep number two on him. You're supposed to keep black claw up, but it's okay because he's the only pet here, so <clears throat> you don't have to. And you can just keep using Flock to your heart's content. I got a little lazy here and uh, didn't put Black Claw back up like I should, but hey, it's okay. <laughs> Which resulted in my poor Plaguewing dying. That's why we have the Dark Moon Zeppelin. It's time to explode! Which is going to take him out immediately. That is near number two. Which also kills you, but that's okay, because that is one dead pig. For fight number five, we have a chance at Ninja, Splint, or Shred. You're going to want to use Foul Feather again if you have one. If not, you can use an Icky, has the same movesets. Northern Hawk Owl, and a Mini Wing. At 1-2-1, one, 1-1-2, one, 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 and 1-1-2. One, one, Any birds, honestly, will work for this. Because uh, this one's aquatic, but you'll be using the same movesets for all three pets that come out. Gonna use a number two, and then immediately a number three, just like before. Let him do his assault. Flock, flock, flock. <laughs> Saying flock too fast sounds like a curse word, doesn't it? It's kind of funny. And dead bird. But that's okay. He ate up the whirlpool. Next bird, or the Owl Hawk, or whatever you use, Predatory Strike. Anything with Predatory Strike as your second pet will do nicely as you just saw. Alright, fun time is over. Now we have Alaron Heart Shade. It starts getting hard from here on out. You'll want the Nexus Whelpling at 1-1-2, the Son of Seath at 2-2-1, two, two, and the Periwinkle Calf at 1-2-2. Now, if you don't have the Nexus Whelpling, you can also use the Stormborn Whelpling, which is the tradable version of that, and uses the same exact moveset. You're going to start off with a number three. Casting an Arcane Storm, and then number one. Now, a note here is uh, that trap he puts on you. If it doesn't explode immediately, you'll use number two instead of number one. But since mine burst off immediately, I'm going to use number one instead. The number two will get rid of that. Oh, looks like I actually don't go with number one, and I go right into number my next pet. Throw down a number one. And a number three. This pet is a deadly for its healing, self-healing, and it's pretty nice. Now we use number two. And then you'll use number one directly after. Pretty much using these abilities on cooldown. 
Use number one again. And then you're gonna use a number three as soon as that comes off cooldown. Right there, because that's where your self-heal comes in. Beautiful. Number one again. And then number two. Yeah, so you, so you can see, pretty much using those on cooldown. Back to number one. Now make sure... Now you can't really mess up this rotation, but make sure you use your number three as soon as that's off cooldown. Because you will be in a world of hurt if you don't. Your son of Zeev is needed for ready here for this pet. Keep using number one. And then number two. Rotation, rotation, rotation. Just like raiding, right? Gonna pass because it's okay. His plague is going to take him out. Here we go. Yep, Nom and Denso. Now for the next pet, now we're gonna swap back to the Whelpling. Whether it's your Nexus or your Stormborn, same abilities. Immediately use number two. More often than not, that trap will not immediately explode. Yep, that's what your whelp is for. Pass, swap, and seize. Number one. Everything's on fire! And you're gonna use the same rotation with this guy again. Number three, number two, and then number one, and just use those when they're on cooldown off their rotation. It'll keep you alive, and it'll keep killing the enemy. So we got number two here. And a number one. You get the idea, I hope. If anything, you're kind of seeing how this kind of works. Pet battling's pretty easy once you understand a pet's rotation. Ooh, get a little close. Get a little close. Whew. Get a little close. Number three. Nope, nope. There goes that pet. He got wrecked. That's okay. He's back for a whole turn because he's undead. Try to get off as many abilities as you can. You're only going to get off one or two. Nice. Got the plague back on him with number one and dead officially. Now we want our periwinkle calf. Number two. Put it on some stone skin. This reduces the damage taken. And now you're just going to deep bite him to death. This ability gains damage uh, when used in succession. And he happens to be weak to it, so haha, -ha, joke's on you. And by you, I mean the pet, not, not you, my lovely audience. <laughs> Number one again, just keep using that until this guy is done so. This fight actually really gave me some problems, so uh, this group, this team was a little difficult. Use your stone skin again, keep that up. Keep up stone skin when it drops down to about two because this guy will stun you occasionally and you're going to want it. Use headbutt. Just did. And keep using deep bite. Yep, see there goes the stun. And I am glad my stone skin was already up. Hoo boy. Using it again. Perfect. And number one. Headbutt when that's up. Take care of this jerk. Almost up and dead. His own fire killed him. Ha ha. Back off, well. For fight number seven, we've got Zuna Skull Crush. Now this is a long fight, so pay attention closely. Blight Breath at two one two, Undercity Cockroach at two two two, and Winter Reindeer at two one one. This is a very long fight, so strap in. Use number three immediately to stun this guy and get him to swap. Get his butt out of here. Now move to your cockroach. And immediately use Apocalypse, which is number three. This is basically a waiting game. Because I had a lot of problems. Swap to your reindeer. And this is where it gets boring. Use number three to bleat. And then use number... Two. Just keep using number three on cooldown and number two as a filler. 
I know. All you're doing is healing because you are waiting for that apocalypse to go off. As you can see up there at the top, the little meteor icon that's got a turn based set of numbers on it. You're waiting for that to come down and this is where this gets a little boring. When that hits three on it, you're going to want to switch back to your Blight Breath. But we'll get to that when we get there. For now, the reason why I ended up going with this team, even though it's a really long fight because of it, is it's just this, this lady gives a lot of problems. Her pets self-heal and they do an incredible amount of damage. So I had to go with an e, with a uh, oldie but a goodie type of move set in order to, to do this. I had to actually look up some help on Wowhead for it because Man, the other fights, I, the other pets I was looking at just weren't helping me. I spent probably a good hour trying to figure out this chick. I do also use Zufus, which is a, a great pet battle guide. I'll put a link to that in the description as well as in a pin for alternative pets. But I'll talk about more. Talk that about. <laughs> wow, I can't talk to talk more about that. There we go. At the end, because it looks like we're getting close. We're at turn five, turn four. And immediately when that hits three, we are going to switch to our Blight Breath. This is very crucial that you pay attention here. Switch to Blight Breath, because you will die if you don't do this right. You use your number three, which is your Bash, to get this Fosling out of here. Because we want to one-shot the other pet that's going to come in and replace him. Switch to your cockroach immediately, and the cockroach will survive. And we want to get rid of Crushface, because he lives up to his name, let me tell you. Whew. Alright. Now switch back to your reindeer, because you're going to want to use Apocalypse again. But you can't use it, it's not off cooldown just yet. It's got a long cooldown on it. Five more turns. So switch to your lovely winter reindeer. And we'll do some self-healing again. Which is fine. It helps keep everyone alive anyways. Because the next one we're gonna wait out in one shot is Fosling here. Use your bleat. Number three and then number two. Just like before. Do this for a few turns between uh, two and four. I think I did it for about uh, three here. Swap to my cockroach again. I throw up a survival shield just so I don't get one shot. Just to eat up time. And then you're going to want to throw down the apocalypse once more. Once that is off cooldown. There we go. Say hello to Apocalypse. Mmm. Now we get to wait <laughs> all over again. You get the idea. Back to the reindeer. And then we're going to use three and two on cooldown, just like before. This fight's really boring and I apologize, but there's a lot of RNG on this chick. And this was, well, kind of the only pet team that didn't constantly die. Because if you do this in challenge mode, you can't heal your pets. So, uh, well, you know, you can't heal them with, like, your healing abilities. You have to, you can only heal them via your pets, which is not enjoyable when you're trying to do challenge versions. But that's okay. That is why we are using the tradable pets. Keep on healing, keep on healing. Use number three when it's on cooldown, but I was a little lazy and I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. Yep. Really boring fight, I know. But I tried multiple different teams and they just kept failing me. So, we took the long route, but hey, it's guaranteed, and that's what you want, because you don't want to lose. I mean, when you're doing this the first time, you can just 
lose and heal yourself and then continue, but you don't want that for challenge mode, which you could also use these teams for. They will do both. I've done both with them. Now, unlike before, we're not going to swap to our Blight Breath at three. I'm going to let it go down to about two or one. Two would be safer before switching back to the Cockroach. I think I go ahead and do it at three. That's right. Yep. Come on. There we go. I wanted to be safe. Back to the cockroach. Yep, number two. There we go. Throw up a survival just in case. I don't know that you can take one more than one apocalypse as a cockroach and survive. Either way, that ensures that you win. There we go. And now we just got the last one. Now this is where we can switch it up. Go to black to back to your blight breath. He's gonna fart on you there like the gross guy he is. And then use number three. Use number one. Get a good sludge. Mmm, tasty. And then number two. And then number one. We're gonna rotate between number one and number two here on cooldown. This guy does a lot of damage, so be prepared for that. Don't panic. Ouchies, look at that. Yep. Let's swap to our reindeer after a couple hits. Get some healing in. More self heals. Number three and then number two. If you can. There we go. Yep. If you can get a stampede, a number one off from your reindeer, if you can't, that's okay. Swap back to your blight breath. Use number two. And number three. Get a good stun on him. Number two. Now you can see how much damage I've been taking. Uh, all three of those pets do that. Use number one. Except this guy doesn't heal like the other two, so that's what makes him a little more tolerable. Number two, just keep going back and forth. Oh, looks like I got a crit there, but you get the idea. Hey there. And for number eight, we have Tasha Riley with the Chitter Spine Skitterling at 122, Little Bling at 221, and the Microbot XD at 122. Now the Cheddar Spine Skitterling is not a tradable pet. You will have to go out and capture this. I have tried subbing in that pet to no avail. You're gonna want it, trust me. It'll make your life so much easier. You capture the little guy in Naz... Najatar? Almost said Nazmir. Najatar, and uh... Yeah, once you have it, you're good. Now, use Black Claw and Swarm. Now it's those two abilities as to why you'll watch this guy die so quickly. And it makes him look easy. He was not easy, trust me. I tried every pet that had a Black Cloud-like ability and a Swarm-like ability that I had that was tradable. And it was no Gucci. Wasn't good. You want the Skitterling. And ideally, he will survive until the next guy comes out, this fellow. Throw on a Black Claw or a Swarm, either way, you're going to die, but that's fine. Because you want to eat up this big ability that he's about to do. Yep, right there. You don't want that going on your other pets. Now we got little Bling. Same old, same old rotation for him. You should use your number two first. That way you can have a shield on you, you're going to want it. Throw down a number three. Get that dot going, and then a number one to weaken him. Take him out. This guy right here is a real problem if you didn't let your first pet eat his ability. At least the first time. Beginning setup stuff really is a pain. All right, number three again. You get the idea. This guy has a pretty set rotation. Two, three, one, two, three, one. Most of the pets do.
back and forth anyways. Make sure number three is up and then keep your number one going. You die once, that's okay, because you can come back for a turn and finish him off. As you can see, uh, Fury here does a lot of damage. And that's why he's a bit of an issue. <clears throat> now we got Glitzy as our last. Keep doing your rotation until you're dead. Do number three and then number one. You'll die here pretty soon. But you can at least get some smacks in on him. Yep, there we go. Now with that inflation debuff on him. This is what makes that critical. Use your number two from your Microbot XD. It'll supercharge you. And then use number three to blast him into oblivion. Here we go. Oh yeah. That's what all that build up was for. Beautiful. And for our number nine and last fight, we have Poxy Whizzle. And you're going to want the Accursed Hexer at 1, 2, 1. Now this pet is a little more expensive, but you want it, trust me. Because it doesn't matter what your next two pets are. You can try to uh, make sure they have a little bit higher health, try to see if they'll survive, but they're gonna die. So it doesn't matter. As long as you have the Accursed Hexer, you are in good spirits. No pun intended. Now, I put the numbers on the screen for you. You're going to use three, two, three, one in that rotation. Do not deviate, I implore you. This is literally a solo fight with your Accursed Hexer if you keep that rotation and do not deviate from it because this guy does a lot of damage and he's <laughs> feels pretty impossible otherwise. So just keep using three, two, three, one, three, two, three, one over and over and don't even swap your one and your three. You'll regret it. I tried it in different ways. But you need to do it in that order. Over and over until he's dead. Rotation, rotation, rotation. And sometimes for me it helps to not even look at the fight itself to see what's going on. I'm just staring at my rotation bar. Kind of like raiding sometimes. Rotation, rotation, rotation. Mechanics until the end. Don't tunnel. Don't tunnel him. You'll get a little confused. Make sure you tell yourself. Three, two, one. No. See? I messed up already. <laughs> three, two, three, one. Three, two, three, one. What number three is doing for you is it's dropping this guy's damage output by about 50%, I think. And it's keeping him... Uh, it only lasts for one round, though, but it's keeping him from annihilating you. Your number two is what heals you and does a little bit of damage on him. Look at that, just like that. And then your number one is your is a good damage dealer. But keeping you alive like that is what will let you win this and keeping that debuff on him. Just keep it going. I know it's a little boring, but it's for the greater good. Just think about that portal you'll have at the end. And the Icarus Hexer is cute. Who doesn't love a cute little evil tiki mask, am I right? Especially one infused with the power of the old gods. Blood gods. Old blood gods. Hmm. Gahoon. <laughs> Number one. Again. And what are we gonna do after number one, everybody? Number three! Good job. Look at that. You're so smart. Three, two, three, one. He's getting down there, but don't tunnel. Keep doing your rotation. Don't get excited. Because he's coming back for another little round. He's in his final form. Keep doing rotation. Don't try to just nail him with your number one. Trust me. He will kill you. Three, two, three, one. Three, two, three, one. Chant it with me. Three, two, three, one. Keep that debuff on him, or he will murder your face. And all you have is a face. You're just a mask. Don't let him take it from you. Three, two, three, one. He's almost there. All right. Yeah. 
Good job. And congratulations! Make sure you talk to the lady at the very end who's talking to you and asks you to join her party. Say yes. She will give you the title Minion of Mayhem. And congratulations, you are now the proud owner of the Minion of Mayhem title and a Black Rock Depths portal, which is very nice. So, congratulations. And I hope you enjoyed this. If you would like to see more guides of this similar fashion on the other dungeons or other pet battle master trainers or anything like that, let me know down in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. And remember, it's never too latte.